Hello and welcome everyone. Um, we are so excited to have Kyoto Aoki um, on for the third in a series of four um, presentations that we're doing through the quarantine concerts um, that kind of explore her full practice. Um, so tonight we'll have a live performance by Asian Improv Arts Midwest um, which will feature Kyoto's solo taiko presentation, followed by a duo with her father, Tatsu Aoki, um, and then they'll have a trio with Jamie Kempkers. Um, so welcome, Kyoto. Thank you for having me. I'm excited um, to share this third session with you guys in the first two, for those of you who have been following um, and watching. I was uh, kind of sharing my visual arts uh, I think, practice or landscape um, that I was curator and things that I'm interested in, moving image and cinema and uh, phot photographic uh, media. And here I am today playing taiko for you. Um, and we have four kind of different sets today. And I'm going to start with two solo presentations. And uh, in throughout the program, we'll come back and chat and talk about uh, the different I think presentations, mode of presentations, um, my approach to them, and also a little bit of the family history, I think, and background of this. So, great. Without further ado, I will um, start playing, yes? Yeah, thank you. And I'll just say, I want to say real quickly that this is really, it's such a pleasure for Experimental Sound Studio to um, be able to present a series like this on um, the quarantine concerts, because it's really how we tend to work, um, how we work outside of the pandemic, and we haven't had as many opportunities um, since we started the streaming program, but hopefully we'll continue in the future of really digging into an artist's practice, which is so, can be so multifaceted. So um, if y'all haven't watched the first two um, streams that Kyoto curated, then those are all on YouTube, um, great to look back at, and we'll, I look forward to continuing the conversation after the first two sets. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna move over to my set.
Hello? I think we're back. Sorry, Dan. Hello. <laughs> So awesome. We're setting up for the next track, so you can see it happening in real time. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about that set. Sure. Um, so the first set, which you see behind me, I think it's a little fuzzy on my end. Um, <laughs> but this is uh, a recent um, kind of the experimentation exploration that I've been doing on this Nida uh, setup. And so actually much of the history of uh, traditional taiko and its music really is rooted in classical Japanese dance um, and theatrical performances. So, which means that there's a lot of choreography that's involved as part of the musicality and part of the phrasing um, that I feel in our group at Skatsa Taiko in our organization RMW feels is often lost, I think, in contemporary applications um, of this kind of instrument uh, where the music really becomes a percussive, fast, rhythmic, um, you know, idea and similar to uh, percussive lines, you know, or rock music, that kind of thing. Um, or really the traditional classic uh, sound is not like that, and this setup, as you can see, allows me to move between the two drums, play the two drums, um, and really think about how it is that I'm presenting my body um, and thinking of the space that my body is taking uh, musically as well as formally kind of on stage, and today I did an abbreviated like 10 minute version of this. Um, and this Nidan setup I've been doing uh, recently um, on my own, originally, it's part of a larger kind of four piece or nidam itself as part of yodan, but we have two members uh, playing from both sides of the drum so that we're each playing at the same time. And then we're also moving around each other as a pair. So again, the choreography is really important, um, but I've just taken that and made it into my own thing and um, made it, you know, improvisational. And I think the kind of the way that I'm playing is trying to still uh, preserve this, uh, the shapes that I can create, um, and also the musicality. Um, but of course, you know, I play with experimental musicians, jazz musicians, and such. So we're kind of thinking of how to um, continue this tradition in the contemporary setting, and then the larger drum. Um, it's our second largest drum that I brought today, uh, but that is your classical old daiko piece, right? Which is uh, requires a lot of strength and endurance, which is why you often see uh, men playing it on stage uh, in a more kind of popularized uh, production, such as, you know, the world-renowned Kobo group, and they have men uh, who are mostly nude uh, in the loincloth to kind of show off their physique, uh, as that's part of the selling point or has become the sell selling point of uh, this particular drum. It's about how fast you can play right and how hard you can play um and showing off how fit you are um but i you know of course i am again trying to use this as a way to express myself musically um so it's a lot of cyclical music um that i have you know been experimenting with and playing with and the cyclicality um you will hear in the next set uh, which i'm going to be playing with my father um so my father him right there, <laughs> and he's I, well, it's taking my drum, thank you for the next set, but um, uh, my father grew up in a um, performing arts household into a geisha household in Tokyo, um, and so his grandmother really ran this house, which, you know, it's the, the geisha is a person of the arts, and so uh, as, as you're born into this household, you're supposed to learn all of the Japanese arts from performing arts, so that's taiko, shamisen, dance, uh, as well as the other classical arts like um, flower arranging, flower arrangements or tear ceremonies and such, and um, part of the okia music, uh, which is this restaurant house uh, that my father grew up in, is has to do with uh, because it's a space holder um, for the main act, which is the actual geisha ladies who come and dance and sing for you. Um, but his uh, house was the kind of uh, introductory. 
action. So you are expected to play for as long as you need to, right, to fill up that space. Uh, so it's really all about improvising, which is, I think um, is where you know all this fits in uh, and how we play so well with uh, contemporary or experimental musicians and creative musicians. Uh, what's improvisational nature is embedded in the music. Um, so musically too, I'm interested in creating uh, these textures, um, textural sonic landscapes with taiko, which often um, we understand as rhythmic, I think, um, and or has become understood as like rhythms, right? Like a four beat rhythm or a three beat rhythm. We don't count any of that. It's all very intuitive. Um, and again, this um, repetitive droning kind of approach. So hopefully you'll hear that too. And uh, the next set we're gonna uh, play. I'm going to now switch to a smaller shime taiko set. Uh, and I'm not wearing kimono, of course, but Trish and I would be wearing kimono, my father as well. Um, and he's going to be playing the shamisen, which is a three stringed uh, Japanese lute. Um, and I think we are almost ready. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Can I ask one question? Yeah. Uh, it it's such a, we have one comment here that says that um, they really felt the choreography. Um, and it is such, as you were saying, there's so much um, movement is so much a part of it. So do you feel like this is more of a, a live performance art form? Um, and and how, did, how do you think about it when you're performing for the camera like this? Or how does it translate? Does that affect the way that you... Um, play? Yeah, I think, well, first and foremost, I would say that I'm a musician, um, but uh, the choreography and the performance, right, as someone that's playing on stage, you are aware of your body taking up space and being seen. And um, so I do think I, I'm a performer in that I perform in front of an audience, um, but I'm performing and I'm playing music, and I think, and uh, for me, um, the choreography is really part of the music. It's part of the musicality. So the way that I'm thinking of space within the musical phrasing um, is expressed through my arms or through my legs or through the breathing or through that space. So it really is rooted in this uh, idea or musical approach. Um, I'm not a dancer, but I am a mover and I am dancing. Um, but all of that is really tied to the music that I am playing. Awesome. Great. Okay, I think we're good to go. So Great. I will see you in the other room. Thank you.